Hey guys, and welcome back to Castle Crush. And today we are going to be playing with a rushing Skull Queen deck. This should be pretty fascinating. And just using a rushing deck with cards other than what you would normally expect to use with a rushing deck uh, can be pretty interesting. It definitely takes a little bit of patience. And in this case, I'm again in the double mana speed mode. This is one of my favorite special game modes because it just really emphasizes the craziness and chaotic aspect of the game and basically my plan is to just really go hard with the skull queen strategy but then i also have which is powerful enough as it is in double mana speed although spells can do a pretty good job as you're seeing here of negating it but my secret weapons are the rage card and the standard bear and those two cards hopefully are going to allow us to kind of uh, trick our opponent a little bit into dodging, as you'll see right here, dodging the dragon. And we dodged a meteor too. And then, oh my gosh, super close. Are we going to get it? Yes, we got it. Wow. What plays? Dodging that dragon to pick up the win we also have a blizzard in here so a couple of really kind of like it's basically a skull queen deck with some kind of game changing cards in there as well because you certainly need a few cards to kind of mix things up if you're playing a straight skeleton deck because there's so many good counters to skeletons that you do kind of need something a little bit extra spice to give you an actual uh, advantage especially in double mana speed where there are lots of spells being used like Meteor and uh, Inferno, Dragon, all kinds of stuff, Fire Elementals. So you definitely have to be, uh, there is, you know, this isn't a deck I can just entirely just play. Normally you can just sort of just play without even thinking a Skull Queen deck, but this one, you know, I was like, sometimes I am going to have to really kind of think here, especially if my opponent has good clearing cards. Like the ice elemental right here which is a problem but see i can use the blizzard to get out of that situation and then the rage card to apply some serious pressure and then finally the skull queen to finish it off i don't think they're going to come back from that series of plays and they do not and that is a fantastic start to this video here with a couple of nice wins we picked up. And just overall, I do think that having a few extra cards with a Skull Queen deck is usually a good thing. A few extra like spell cards or just some cards to kind of change the game a little bit. And right there getting a little bit of extra damage in with the Rage card and... Now you can see I'm really packing on the pressure to my opponents, which Skull Queen decks are just, you know, they're known for that. Skull Queen decks are definitely known for being able to really pack on the pressure. And don't think I have a standard bear here yet, but if I could get one, I do get one. So I'm going to probably, I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I could swap in there and take out that Archer Queen because she is a problematic card. And then probably go with the Black Witch on that Black Knight. And now we've regained control of a couple lanes. Oh, but they come back with the dragon. What are we going to do? I'm running out of cards to play. What are we going to do? Interesting choices. I If I'd been on the ball with the Blizzard, I could have tried to swap... I'm not sure why I did that, to be honest. I probably should have waited until the specter was past the dragon and then swapped lanes. Oh, this is, this is going to be close. This is going to be quite close. Oh no, we're going to lose. I think if I just waited until the specter was past the dragon, I think I would have had a better chance. Still doing some damage, actually, to my opponent, interestingly enough. 
but I don't really have any cards left. I should have just kept the cards in my hand at that point, probably for a Boneyard, but there was no Boneyard to be found. So that one was unfortunate. Well played by them to kind of just not give in to the pressure, I guess. It's a little bit easier when you have a dragon in your back pocket and you just know you can... You just have to reach the dragon and then you can take off most of the uh, pressure that your opponent is applying with its sort of knockback effect. But just the, the really ability to put like a huge amount of pressure on my opponent here is uh, just something I was trying to do, really take advantage of. And then you can see again, I have the blizzard in case they try anything funny. But I didn't need to use it yet. So just continuing to pack on the skeletons. This match is closer than I would have expected, though, is the funny part. Because um, it looked, I felt like I had good dominance over like the early stages, but things got pretty tight here. And knowing that they have these cards they can play, I'm like, at my castle, I'm like, uh-oh. I really need some plays with the rage. Come on, rage. I'm so close. One more hit. No. <laughs> Good game. Wow. So when to use the standard bearer is definitely the big question that I'm going to have in all of these matches and I'm trying to figure it out but usually trying to get down a lot of other cards first and then try to use the standard bearer it's kind of a finishing move in case my opponent comes up with a really good counter such as a dragon or executioner valkyrie something like that you know just having the ability to dodge Ooh, I was going to say right there I almost maybe could have gone right into the uh, black witch but I do have some good cards in the end and was able to get that one done without even really needing to do too much funny stuff. So I decided to put down the rage here early in this match, trying to uh, work on their castle health a little bit because I want to get want to try and get it lowered closer to mine at least and work on some of the advantage they have. And I'm doing a pretty good job here early on. Good time to maybe swap lanes. Although, I think I thought I was keeping their rush at bay. So I decided to just keep doing that since I had two other lanes. And... Really got, really got good cards set up here at least. Now here could come a good chance for a couple of different cards. So I decide to use Blizzard. Uh-oh. That could be an issue. That could be an issue. I should probably swap lanes again. I think I didn't quite see it here. I thought I could get rid of that middle lane stack. Oh, okay. I do eventually end up swapping lanes, which was, I think, the right thing to do. Uh-oh. Now I'm like, no. But I did get the Black Witch in briefly, trying to use every card at my disposal. Now we have to rage in the top lane and hope something can happen. Ooh, or can I swap lanes? Yes, swap the lanes. Oh, uh, but the problem is I still have so much damage to cover on their castle. Can I do it? Oh, am I gonna get it? Wow, I really should not win that match, but I did because they couldn't find anything to block me with, I guess? So, yeah, I mean, that is the nice thing about having Boneyard, of course, is that uh, you do get that power even if they're pushing your, your castle to sort of still fight back a little bit. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Standard Bear Skull Queen Rage deck here. I thought it was a really interesting deck and just gave, you know, gives you a lot of fun options and a kind of a fun twist on the original sort of Skull Queen decks. So leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments and what other types of content I should create. Maybe subscribe if you're new to my channel. 
And thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for more videos.